All right. Um, grace, peace, and blessings from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. I thank everybody for joining tonight's Bible teaching. And as you know, if you have been following this ministry and this, this Bible teaching, we are currently now in the second epistle of Timothy, which is basically the second letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, who was also a minister of the gospel. So just a short recap of the last chapter, the last um, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, which Brother Chakark um, taught on. Basically, in that chapter, it spoke about, you know, money, you know, greed and going astray into error because of money. You know, there is a, a, a statement in there that says, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, sometimes people misquote this and say money is the root of all evil, but that's not true. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. And Paul begins to write in this letter that, you know, many have strayed from the faith because of the love of money, you know, because of greed, because of covetousness, which is also known as avarice. All right. Anytime a person loves money, they're not satisfied with the amount that they have. They're not satisfied with the amount that they make. They always want more and more. It's an insatiable greed, all right? It's insatiable, can't be satisfied. And people of the faith back then and even today have swerved from the gospel, swerved from the faith in favor of money. You know, and this is what Paul was warning about in that um that epistle the last chapter jesus also warned about it as well in the parable of the sower you know if you read through that matthew chapter 13 one of the seeds were sown among the thorns in which he described were those who hear the word but the the what was it the deceitfulness of wealth lust of other things and the cares of this life settle in and choke that seed and they don't bear fruit so he began to say that those who desire to be rich, they fall into temptation and a snare, which is a trap, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, and it drowns people in perdition and destruction. A lot of people end up in a lot of bondages, baggages, a lot of debts over their head, whatever it is, a lot of situations because of money, because of greed, they desire more and more. And it's not God's will for us to be greedy, but it is always God's will as it stated in the last chapter, godliness with contentment is great gain. That is always God's will, to be content, all right? Because we brought nothing into this world and you're not taking anything with you. That's how it is. We came into this world naked and you're, you're going to leave with nothing, all right? The only thing that counts is what you do for Christ, all right? Out of sincere, true love. That's the only thing that's going to count, all right? That's how you're going to lay treasures up in heaven, all right? That's it. That's all that counts, Paul also began to speak about the man of God. What should they pursue? All right. Pursuing righteousness, pursuing godliness, pursuing faith, love, patience, right? Gentleness. All right. And to fight the, the fight of good faith. That is basically seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what Jesus was talking about. That's what it is. Seeking the heavenly virtues. All right seeking to grow more in the fruits of the spirit. That is how you become spiritually rich, spiritually enriched, all right, through the grace of Jesus Christ. That's what God desires for us to seek after, those heavenly things. And then everything else will be added unto you, all right? This is what he was saying, to seek those things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness, praise God. And he also gave a commandment. Now, listen. He stated that those who are rich in this world, right? The commandment was not to put their trust in riches, all right? Having money is not evil. But remember, as I, as I mentioned, right, as the scriptures mentioned, it's a heart issue. So he says, don't put your trust in uncertain riches, but rather in the living God, all right? And he commands them who are rich to do good, all right? To be rich in good works, always willing to share, all right? Ready to give. So that way they store up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come and they may lay hold onto eternal life, all right? So it's hard for a rich man to get in heaven, but it's not impossible. It's hard. It's hard. As you, as you know that story, the young rich man who put his trust inside those treasures, all right, inside his possessions that he couldn't even give to the poor and follow the Lord Jesus Christ, right? 
But those who have wealth, God commands them to share, you know, help the needy, help the poor. Because in doing so, as I mentioned, that's how you lay treasures up in heaven. All right. And that's basically what Paul taught in the last epistle. You know, it was mostly a chapter focused on, you know, money and people being led astray from it. So I pray that we learn from that chapter because, you know, it's very important. As I mentioned, you know, in this world, money is the number one competitor with the heart of man, you know, com competing with God for the heart of man, money. That's why Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon. And mammon is money, property, and possessions. So that was a short recap of the last chapter. We're now going to go into 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to open us up in prayer, and we are going to begin. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Son of the living God, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross for our sins and rose again on the third day, who is exalted on high in heaven and is set at your right hand, who is now the judge of the quick and the dead. Yes, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to your glory, O Father. Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for this gathering, O Lord God, that we're able to engage in another Bible teaching, another fellowship, O Lord God Almighty, where we can hear your words, O Lord God. We're asking even now that what is going to be said here today, O God, that we take it to heart, that it refreshes our spirit, O God, that it encourages us, O God, that it exhorts us, O Lord God Almighty. I'm praying that you use me, O God, and strengthen me in this work, O God. Even now, we come against any demonic spirits, any spirits of deception, any form of witchcraft, any form of attacks of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that you cover this Bible teaching line, O Lord God Almighty. Use it for your glory, O Lord God Almighty. And help us to continue to seek you, O Lord God, to seek your will for our lives, O Lord God. And not to live for ourselves, O Lord God, because it's not going to profit us. Let your will be done in our lives, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and we pray. Amen. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Feel free to follow along. Feel free to use any version that you choose. And it reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, our beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers and night, night and day. That's important. Paul says whom he serves God. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. You know how, how important it is to have a pure conscience? You know how important it is to have a pure heart? Jesus said, blessed are a pure heart, they're going to see God. And Jesus said, without holiness, no man's going to see the Lord, right? It's written in the epistle. Without holiness, no man's going to see the Lord. I believe it's written in the book of Hebrews, all right? It's important to have a clear, clean conscience before God, all right? That's what the word does. The word of God does. It tells us in a psalm, how can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to to your word. The word of God is what's going to clear a man's conscience as they live by it, right? The word of God is what's going to purify a person's heart as they live by it, all right? That is how a person is going to be purified and sanctified in Christ Jesus. So you can worship God in spirit and in truth with a clear conscience before him, all right? Anytime we live contrary to the word, we corrupt our heart. Anytime we live contrary to the word, we defile our conscience. All right? That is why people in this world, yeah. right, their conscience have been seared. Their conscience have been seared. They have no more affection. You ever heard the saying when people usually say, when you see people commit gruesome acts, you hear the, the saying where they say, why does it seem like people have no soul? Why does it seem like people have no conscience? All right, because people's consciences are hard. They're living in sin. That's what sin does. It hardens your heart. It defiles your conscience. All right, and that is why people, many people are not going to stand before God with a clear conscience. Why? Because they don't obey the word. They haven't been washed and cleansed by the blood of Christ. Praise God. I'm going to read that again. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. As my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers day and night. 
greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. Um, someone just mentioned in here how, as he read through the scriptures, how the early church, you know, the disciples, they were in joy or long to see their brethren. All right. This is, and I mentioned, this is what the Lord wants for his people. All right. That joy where you long to see your brethren because that love in you towards your brethren is growing. All right. Agape. That's what he desires. Agape to grow. And for that to grow, we must exercise agape. We must exercise love. All right. That's how it grows. That's what's happening in the early church. They lay their lives down for their brethren. Give. They shared all things in common. Pray for each other. Intercede for each other. Help each other. All right. And because of that, the love within them grew. Selfishness, it darkens your heart. Selfishness hinders the love of God in people because selfishness is of the flesh. That's the carnal man. All right. That's the carnal man. Verse four again, greatly desiring to see you, greatly desiring to see his brethren, being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Praise God. Now listen to this. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. Okay, that quote that he stated, that statement, stirring up the gift of God, it basically means to like rekindle, all right? Fan into flames, all right? He's exhorting Timothy to stir up that gift of God, right? I want us to all get this. You see, when we come to Christ, right? There's this fire that is burning in us, all right? You receive the Holy Ghost. You receive gifts of the Spirit, and there's this fire, this zeal that begins to burn in you. God put that in you. Before you came to Christ, you had no zeal for God. You have no zeal for the things of God. All right. So when you have this zeal, after you come into, you come to Christ, know for sure that it is God that put that in you. All right. He put that in you and he put it in for, you, for a reason. There are times, now this happened to me before, all right. When we begin to become laxed, all right, begin to sit on our gifts, sit on the sideline, you know, not doing anything, and we get caught up with doing other things, that fire begins to dim, all right? You begin to become what the Bible calls lukewarm, all right? You, you, you seem to begin to lack this zeal, lack this um, eagerness, all right, to do the works of God because you get caught up in other worldly things, all right? We have to, if that ever happens, you've reached in that state. What Paul is exhorting Timothy is to stir it up, stir up that gift, flat, flat, fan it into flames, okay? Fan it back into flames, that gift of God that is in you, okay? This comes to being diligent first in prayer, seeking him, putting away all these worldly distractions because that itself is going to cloud it out, all right? We don't know what Timothy was doing. But Paul knew of something, all right? We could see that perhaps Timothy wasn't using the gift, all right? But we're actually going to see in the next verse what's going on, all right? So he exhorts Timothy to fan, in other words, to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of the hands. Now listen, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. At times, people become fearful of using the gifts that God give them, whether because they're shy they're afraid of what people are going to say to them. They're afraid of what because they're going to get rejected and they end up sitting on it. And they don't end up using it. And that's when that fire begins to dim. All right. For the fire to actually burn hotter and hotter, you got to exercise. You got to use it. You got to use it. So perhaps Timothy was fearful. Who knows? Right. But Paul is exhorting him, letting him know, listen, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. And we have to remember that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. All right. Another, in another translation, it reads timid, to be timid. All right. Which means cowardly. Okay. Cowardly. God doesn't want us to be cowards. He doesn't want us to be fearful, but he wants us to be bold in regards to preaching the gospel, to be bold in regards to testifying of the love of Christ to other people, to be bold in regards to using the gifts and the talents He's given to us through Jesus Christ. 
All right. I'm going to read that again, verse six and seven. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. So therefore, there's another exhortation. Exhorting them, don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. So we can see a clear picture what may have been going on with Timothy. Timothy was young. He was a, he was a young. I don't know how old he was, but he was young, especially compared to Paul. So he may have been afraid of what he may uh, would possibly suffer for the faith, and especially seeing what Paul is going through. So that's why Paul is stating to him, do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. All right, but share with me in sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. We can't be ashamed of these things. We can't be ashamed of all what we may suffer for standing up for the truth. We can't be ashamed because we may be rejected. We may be viewed as an outcast, maybe viewed as you know losers or lost, whatever. All right, we can't be ashamed of that stuff. But we got to stand up for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse nine, who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. God's foreknowledge, all right? He calls people according to his foreknowledge. Verse 10, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. You know, praise God for salvation that he given to us through Jesus Christ. All right? Because of Christ Jesus, we can now partake in immortality. All right? Once you receive Christ Jesus, you receive the word of God and you live for him. You are partake, partake of all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And we thank God for that. Paul says, to which he was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded, praise God, and persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Verse 13, hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love who are in Christ Jesus, all right? This is the exhortation to hold fast what God has given us, all right? When you receive this word, hold fast to it because wolves are gonna come, all right? People are gonna come with other doctrines, other teachings that Jesus himself never taught. And this is why you have to be on guard for it. You have to be on guard and hold fast to the word that you heard, all right? The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is what is able to save your souls. There's no other doctrine out there that can save you, none, nothing. So you have to know the gospel, the truth, what Jesus himself preached, what the apostles preached, what Paul preached. It's the same gospel. Anybody who preaches any other gospel that Paul never preached, Jesus never preached, the 12 never preached. What does it say in Galatians chapter 1? Let them be accursed. Even if it's an angel, let them be accursed. All right, praise God. I'm read 13 again. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from me among whom are by jealous and Hermogenes. The Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. So what was going on here is at times there are people who turned away from Paul because they were ashamed of his circumstances. They didn't want to be associated with him, right? There's times where you see people of, let's use a, use a term, a lower state, all right? They may look rugged, raggedy, whatever. And people are ashamed to associate with them because of how they look, because of their lifestyle. That's the mentality that people had back then. You know, certain people in regards to Apostle Paul, because they saw him going through certain sufferings. They saw him being chained in prison. 
they didn't want to be associated with him anymore. You know, this even happened with Jesus because of what he was going through. People turned away from him as well. All right. Verses 17, but when he arrived, verse 16, the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously and found me. The Lord granted him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. So what is this teaching us? All right. We see our brethren going through stuff. We can't be ashamed of other people because of their lifestyles. That's not love. We can't be ashamed, all right? Think of it of your own natural family member, all right? You wouldn't be ashamed of your own natural family member. I mean, well, some people may, all right? Because I've, I've, I've witnessed people who are like that. You know, their family members may go through certain things and they don't want to do nothing with them. But nevertheless, right? We have to go beyond that. Because true love, you're not going to be ashamed of people because of their status, because of their estate, what they may be going through. Because if you are, you're going to abandon them. All right. And that's not the love of Christ. So Paul is giving that exhortation to them. You know, don't be ashamed of him. As he said to Timothy, don't be ashamed of him. Christ hasn't called us to that walk, but he's called us to grow in love. He's called us to grow in peace, to continue to encourage each other, to continue to help one another and to love one another as he loved us. This concludes 2 Timothy chapter 1. And now, um, at this time, this was a relatively short chapter. At this time, I'll leave it open for any discussion, questions, anything anybody would like to share. Feel free to do it at this time. Um Steve, um, um, I guess I'll go. Oh, um, before me, I'll get, go ahead, Steve. I, I wanted to say that reminds me of that verse in Luke chapter 6 where Christ said, love your enemies. It was actually, ironically, the verse of the day today and the Bible app. And, you know, Timothy's 2 chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 really coincides with that verse where Jesus said to love your enemies and pray for them. You know, um, it was in Luke chapter six. Um, so I, I just wanted to say it. I even remember tweeting about that and then saying, you got to also pray for the ones that are pro-choicers and the ones that had abortions and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yes, praise God. Yes, that's the part of the gospel walk. That is how your love is going to grow. As I mentioned, you know, it's easy to love people who um who love you back. That's like lifting five pound weights. But if you really want to grow in love, you got to lift heavier weights, meaning you got to love your enemy. That's a very heavier weight. That's what Jesus commanded us to do. Yes, man, definitely. Um, Nelson, go ahead. Um, man, peace, family. Man, I, I wanted to say, man, this is definitely hitting. Um, the virtues, man, like, I, even, I wasn't even for... Okay, you remind me to get here, okay? I'm on the phone, okay? That is talking. Um, I feel like the virtues part when you said seeking, it's okay. Why, look, even when you said, um, it's okay. Even when you said uh, the, the kingdom of God is um, seeking heavenly virtues, like the, basically the fruits of the Holy Spirit, man, like, because I wasn't even for sure on what was seeking the kingdom of God was, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't for sure. Like, damn, what what is it like? But it's it's those heavenly virtues. Living living by those heavenly virtues. You gonna eat soon when mommy get there, okay? Okay, you right on mommy. Okay, you okay? all good, okay? Right. But yeah, man, I want to man. I'm gonna say this. Book the book Peter, man. Paul, the Thessalonian, uh, the Thessalonian, uh, um, uh, Ephesians, man, the book of James, you, you break it up a little bit, Nelson. 
and give a clear description. God, where, where will we be, you know what I'm saying, without the word of God, what direction will we really have, you know, outside of the Holy Spirit, man, like, without the word of God, we will not have no direction, you know what I'm saying, we want to know what to do, if it wasn't, if we had all these other books out here in the world, and the Bible wasn't out here, man, man, we would be out here, this world would be even more crazy than it is now, so um, I just want to say, it's just a blessing to be amongst you all, man. And um, let's continue to just grow in love and forgiveness in those heavenly virtues. Let's continue to grow in those and show up, man, and and show up in each and every way, uh, wherever we work. Uh, I'm talking about everywhere we go, let's just, you know, just live for the glory of God and really see to keep his commandments, you know, because Christ said if you love him, you're going to keep his commandments. You know what I'm saying? His yoke is light. Take upon his yoke, for his yoke is light. It's easy, and um, and you know it, it, the the two commandments, you know, the two greatest commandments that sums up the law of the Torah and the prophets, is you know, um, you know, seek to love God with all your whole heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then a new commandment He gave us, um, love others as I have, I have loved you. You know what I'm saying? Love your enemies. Pray for those who. You know, pray for those who persecute you. And every he, he's showing us how to change our heart. You know what I'm saying? And truly, how to have a greater response, you know, and to really prove the enemy wrong. You know what I'm saying? The only thing we should be proving some, something wrong is the enemy wrong, you know, and prove that God, word, you know, God knows his word is true. You know, we need to prove the enemy wrong to, hey, look, we a child of God. And, you know, this, this, I'm going to remind you of what God, you know, tell me about my life and my destiny. Like, you know, the Satan is a lie. You know what I'm saying? He always remain that. The he try to do is have us focus on our lack. He try to have us focus on what we don't have. He try to uh, have us dwell on the past and who we used to be and all these things we did, man, to try to, you know, try to rob you of your peace of the present moment in the present day, man. You know, so I, I encourage you all to don't dwell on the past, you know, um, find beauty and walking away from the past and who you used to be, let it go. Um, um, give it to God. You know, every problem you got laid at the feet of Jesus Christ, you know, and, um, man, just, um, and don't worry, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow got its own problems, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's just, every chance we get, let's just give it our all, man. Let's just give it our all. So I just want to say that, family. Praise God. Yes, man. I'm glad um, that you mentioned about don't dwell on the past. You know, that's something I, I also got, you know, remind myself on, you know, sometimes thoughts pop up of the past and stuff and, I got to remind myself, you know, don't, don't dwell on the past. You know, I, I have to remind myself of that. Don't look back, you know, just to stay focused because going on the past is going to hinder you. You're not going to get nowhere. You know, it's not going to benefit you. It's not, you know, nothing you could change, you know? So that's a, that's a good word, you know, to, um, you know, remind us, you know, don't dwell on the past, but yes, definitely, man. Definitely. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. You're welcome, man. I'm a, I'm a one, one quote, one quote to relate to that um i got a quote that said i say at times we often forget at times we also forget that we have been by constantly trying to pursue and do better trying to pursue and be trying to pursue to do better and be better so a lot of times us as humans we we forget how, how far God has brought us and how much we did overcome because we constantly every day like, oh, I got to get better. Gotta, of course, God wants us to grow. He wants us to excel in him and his soul. But sometimes we still just be like, dang. You know, we got to just sit down and be still be like, man, like, and just thank God for just bringing us so far, you know. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Definitely. Right. Anybody else like to share anything? Um, any questions or insights? No, feel free to do it at this time. Yes, I would like to share. So 
In verse 5, when it says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned or unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So that really reminded me of Proverbs 22, 6, which says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I feel like this is an example of generational blessings because in Exodus 20 verses five through six, it talks about generational curses, which, which says, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So I think that really shows the importance of training up your child in the correct way. And like with the blessing of having, you know, parents who are in the Lord and, you know, from just Lois's good work on training up Eunice. I mean, look at how far it's brought Timothy and just the high status that he got to be in and doing good works for the kingdom. So it's very important to train up our children, you know, in the Lord. And then when you were talking about Odain, how Christ was abandoned and how Paul was abandoned by being in a low estate, it reminded me of Proverbs 19, verses 6 through 7. And I have to pull that up really quick. Okay. Many. Oh, I lost it. Okay. Many will entreat the favor of the prince and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. So that's all that I had to share. Thank you. Wow, that was powerful, Destiny. Yes. <laughs> and you, you correlated the verses correctly. Powerful. Yes. Um, definitely it's important, you know. That's why it's important. Like, you know, it's it's a it's a blessing when you have, you know, godly parents who are in the faith. Yes, because then you, you know, they can raise their children in the faith as well to be godly, to live for God. It's, 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 it's a benefit, you know, and it goes to show as right here, Timothy, he had, um, like, um, godly parents, you know, his mother and his grandmother, you know? So yes, the Bible says train a child in the way they should go. And as they get older, they won't depart from it. That's why it's important, you know, for, you know, for us to raise our children, you know, in the way they should go, the ways of the Lord, the right way, how to live. Even if we, if, if we didn't have godly parents, if we came from rough backgrounds, but now we come into the faith. All right, let's break that generational curse here. Let's break that generational behavior right here and now. And when you have children, you teach them the right way to live as you're also living the right way. So that's very important. Yes, definitely. You know, thank you for sharing that. Praise God. I was powerful. All right. Um, anybody else like to share anything? Any questions or insight? Feel free to do it at this time. All right, Brother Tarpley, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Uh, good word, good word, man. Uh hello, everybody. Um, uh, especially like uh, you know, uh, verses seven through ten. It's um because it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? So so when fear come up on me in any situation, I know that came from the devil, right? Because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of a power and love and of a sound mind, right? And then it says, verse number eight, it says, be not, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. So we are prisoners, right? And we are partakers of the affliction of the gospel, man. So 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 when we come under attack, right? They're not attacking us, man. <laughs> They're attacking our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? And I remember there's a scripture and it said that Jesus Christ didn't even have nowhere to lay his head, man. He had nowhere to lay his head. And it's like we think about people, man, when they try to come up against us or they say falsy things about us or they might hate on us, whatever. But they hated Christ before they hated us. You know what I'm trying to say? It's, it's never about us. It's always about Christ, right? Then it says, number nine, who has saved us and, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, 
but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the word began. So it's not according to our works. I mean, there's a scripture that said that, that all our works is going to burn up. Everything's going to burn up, man. Your title, your works, everything. And that's why I was looking at, bro. Christ, God got this whole thing, man, to where nobody's getting away, man. I remember there's a scripture that said, man, he made his, he made the, he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, it's like, bro, this thing right here, bro, verse number 10, last one, it says, but, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. So we have, so brothers and sisters, when you walk into the room, anywhere you go, you are the light of the world. You know how powerful that is, man. Do you know how powerful that is? I remember my friend said this, man. When you turn the light on, right? Outside, you turn the light on, right? What do you see around the light? It's little bugs. So your light is going to attract little bugs. That's people that's trying to knock your light out, right? It's a situation I'm going through right now. I'm going to share a testimony with you guys. Um, I'll be 50 in September, man. But when I grew up, right, I was a gang member. I was a blood from San Diego, right? It's called Five Nine Browns, right? And it was one of our, one of my buddies, you know what I'm saying? He done something, right, to where where he got like 30 something years right and he just got released but while he was going to trial he had me and my friend come to court right and i think i'm probably not by i think i'm probably like about like 26 27 at this time right so we come to court and then he come out and he starts snitching and i'm like man this is a killer dude this so i like look i stood up and just walked out right so like his cousin couldn't come in because you know what i'm saying we're both you know what i'm saying we're both talking on his behalf. So I told Scott, I said, man, I said, man, they call him Cisco. I said, man, Cisco just told, he's like, what? So we had to go in there, right? So make a long story short, we, we driving home and you know, I did what I was supposed to do. I'm like, I went back, I told all the OG, I said, man, Cisco told, right? So now he just got out like a week later, right? And I got a buddy named Daniel, brother Daniel, right? He's a buddy named Daniel, right? He telling me, to go down to the court, get the paperwork and all that. I said, brother, I don't live by them rules no more, brother. That What I did back then, bro, that was, that was all devil work, bro. I'm going to put this situation in the Lord's hands. because I guess he getting out saying he going to do this and do that, right? So I said, you know what, bro? I don't live by that no more, bro. I'm a soldier for the Lord. So now me and my friend really don't talk and you know what I'm saying? But once you go by this word, man, you have to put everything in God's hands, man. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I told I told all my homies out, I said, he better be careful because I'm a chosen man of God and God will do something to him. You know what I'm saying? I said, I said, I said, you know, his father, the devil, got to come to my father and get permission to anything that happened to me. My, my father ain't going to allow it. Ain't nothing going to happen to me, brother. And I'm standing on that, brother. And I'm and there's no fear in me, bro. And I feel peace. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know what I'm saying? Now I can go down and get the paperwork and expose them and do all that. But what's that going to do? You know what I'm saying? My job is to win that brother to Christ. So when that brother contact me, he just got out. He's like in the transitional home, I heard. You know what I'm saying? He, he been out for like about a week, but I know he's going to contact me and I'm going to give him the gospel. I'm saying, bro, I don't live like that no more, brother. I don't care what you did 30 years ago. I don't care what kind of animosity you got, brother, but we two grown men and I'm going to give him the plan of salvation, brother. And I'm going to stand on the word of God, man. So I'm just saying about the fear part because first, you know what I'm saying? First some fear came up on me to like, I got to protect myself. No, I ain't got to protect myself, man. God got me. I'm covered in the blood of the lamb, man. So I just want to share that with you guys, man. Thanks for listening, brother. Amen. Oh, yo, yo, that's powerful, bro. I'm telling you right now, man, that, that's putting something like joy in my heart, man. It is very encouraging, man. And and just to see your boldness, man, your zeal, man. Tell you, yo, people like you inspire me, man. That's how you're supposed to live. You just you said you put your trust in God. You ain't you're not you're not putting your trust in man, court, whatever. You know what I mean? That's fire. That's fire, man. Yes, man. Keep 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 going, man. Keep trusting God. He has you. Amen. He has you, man. The word says, "No open forge against you. You're gonna prosper. And every word that rises against you in the judgment, you'll condemn." Praise Amen. God, man. That's why I posted that scripture on my Facebook. I said, <laughs> I said, 
I said, when a man's ways please the Lord, he make even his enemies at peace with him. Then I put even the ones who just got out of jail. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> <laughs> praise God, man. Oh, man. Praise God for you, Brother Tarpy. Um, Nelson, go ahead. Yeah, man, that that was a bless. That's a blessing, man, bro. Just, yeah. Come on, man. And it's funny sharing it. I think you shared that testimony, kind of. Uh, I don't know if he had got out yet, but you kind of shared it with us before, man. But it's it's bro, that's beautiful, man, for real. Like, and oh yeah, that you know you live in no way before this you shall cry. Amen. Amen, brother. He just, yeah, just yeah, got out. Okay, cool, week. cool. I know you had mentioned something about him. Yeah. I, yeah, 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 locked up or something like that, though. But yeah, bro, man, that's that's a blessing, man. And you saying that bold on the fact that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, it will not work. You standing bold on that, you know. God say, Touch not my anointing, you feel me? And you and God did not consider it to be, man. So, and then the fact that you, you, you it's, a, it's a blessing, man. It's a when you know the word of God and you know the gospel, bro. And you know you can pour, you know you can put that seed, bro. And it's all love, bro. Dude, when you if you all in dibbling, dabbling in these other books and stuff, man, these people don't even know how to start. These people don't even be knowing what they explain. They 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 don't even know how to show what we're talking about, man. You know, God, when you profess you Double Christ, the gospel of Christ in somebody, man. It really brings it, it really pouring light in, into darkness, man. You feel me? Man, it's a lesson, bro. I just want to say, man, keep going. What Christ said, Christ, what the word said, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, right? But a fear, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We got the power to tremble, scorpions and snakes at the enemy. Yeah. We got um love. We got the love. And, and think about this, right? Peter said, uh, I think it was Peter who asked Christ, said, if my brother sinned against me, how many times should I forgive him? Seven times? Amen. Christ said, no, you shall forgive You shall forgive your brethren 70 times seven. So what's that? That's 490 times a day. <laughs> I'm, you telling me I got the love in me to forgive my brother and sisters 490 times a, a day? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, man, just that, man, it's it's a beautiful thing, bro. Just like when Christ was getting crucified. Forgive them for what they know, not what they do. When the brother in the Old Testament was getting stoned, uh, he was getting, I think it was a, it was a uh, wrong judgment, but they were stoning him for an uh, accusation or something. And he said, Father, hold this, hold this count not against them. Like, man, it's like, bro, it's like when God say, People who pray against you, man, pray for them. And, and you know what I'm saying? And when people speak judgment over your life and you actually pray, God, I hope you don't bring, don't bring no judgment yeah. in their life for them. Forgive them for they know not what they do. They in their flesh. They in their heart. They, uh. they want to speak judgment. They want to do this. They want to do that. But God, forgive them, Father. Forgive them because you know my heart. My heart is with you. They heart not with you, Father. But heavenly, we, man, I just it's a blessing, bro. Man, I'm I'm so grateful to hear that, man. And your testimony you you told about uh uh the gambling when you was I had listened to that replay, bro. Yeah. You was talking about that that time, bro, in Vegas, man, bro, yeah. <laughs> man. It's just it's a blessing to be in much you are, man. Amen. Appreciate it, soldier. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Definitely, yo. Thanks for sharing that, Nelson. Um, anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Any questions? Um, any insights? Feel free to do it at this time. Brother Dame, I got a question for you, man. Have you read the whole Bible, Brother O'Day? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, when the Lord had um had called me back in 2010. <laughs> I uh, first thought I went, I read through the whole oh, okay. um New Testament first. I went through the whole New Testament first. And then the Lord had um spoke to me and said, all right, now, now go through the entire Old Testament. So I did that. So yes, I have. Okay. Amen. Yep. Amen. It's a blessing. Man. You got the gift of teaching, bro. A lot of us don't have that. You got that gift, bro. Yeah. And run with it, bro. You and your wife, man, y'all keep going. 
steadfast, man. You guys are you guys are really um feeding a lot of sheep, man. And it's a blessing, man. See, 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 once we put these things to action, see, that's what counts, bro. Cause I got a frown that gonna say this, man. You know I'm on day. You know what I'm saying? A lot of knowledge, bro. A lot of knowledge, you know, no, you know what I'm saying, the prophecies, the revelation, whatever. But don't put none of it to action, though. You know what I'm saying? Ain't bearing no fruit. But can point out everything with everybody else. You know what I'm trying to say? And it's yeah. like, it's just, it's old, bro. That's getting old now. Because because once you start bearing fruit, you start having more compassion and love for the brother and sister. You know what I'm trying to say? Once you get out there, bro, and you really start seeing how dark this world is, you start having more compassion. Like Christ had more compassion for people. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's all I want to say. Yes, yes, definitely. You know, you that's that's because you know you grow more in love and stuff. You begin to exercise love. You know, preaching the gospel, yeah. and you seeing the condition they're in, and you actually seeing yeah. where they're headed. Yes, yes, you yes. Know, yeah. You know, me and my wife talk about this almost every day. Like you know, the condition people are in, and and you know, where they're headed. You know, we're hearing stories about people. You know, this and that happened to them. Like, man, it's, it's it's a dark world, man. And, People need to wake up, you know, and that's, you know, we got to do that. Preach the gospel. Who wants to hear? Let them hear. Who wants to reject? Let them reject. So, so what we're going to do next year, bro, I'm going um, to pay for you and your wife to come out here and man, visit me and my wife. We're going to go to dinner. We're going to hang out for a weekend, man. Amen. Y'all got kids. Y'all got, <laughs> huh? got, got kids. Huh? You got kids, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. You got kids, kids, right? Yeah. What's the age? Um, Ages. Six and three. Okay, okay. So I got two boys, six and eight. So we'll plan a time for next year, bro. Lord willing, man. Send for you and your wife, man. Come on, hey, and we hang on out, man. You know what I'm saying? Go to dinner, and you know what I'm saying? Just do it up for a weekend. Sounds good, man. Definitely looking forward. That's to a it, question, man. brother. When, when will you visit me in, in Maryland, though? Yes. <laughs> <I'm>, you know, <laughs> hey, you want, you want to hit the street? Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, you want to hit the street corner and preach, man, or what? No, I'm, I'm down. down, man. Yes, man, I'm the, no, the real question, yeah. no, the real question is when you come to see me, man. <laughs> no, when you come question. to see me, we, <laughs> yes, yes. we can oh, we can always find a, a street corner and preach. You know, we should we should all be preaching as a group. Amen. Hey, and hey, let's do it, man, because we only live once, right? Yes, Let's yes, it, you know, all definitely all according to God, God leading, you know what I mean? And I'm yeah. glad, you know, you you brought up that um um Steve because um my wife and I we were actually talking about that, you know, as God leads, um about coming to, you know, where you are because you and some other people are also in that same state, you know? And um we you know, we just been praying about things, you know, about, you know, heading there. You know, so look out for it, Steve. You know, look out for it because it's something that you know it's, it's in our heart and our spirit, and we're 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 praying about it and stuff. Because I said, you, you know, you live out there. Uh, I believe it's Maryland, but there's other people who I also spoke with who also lives out there, and you know, we just been saying like, man, you know, some of these people they live out in that same area. So who knows? You know, we're definitely looking forward to coming out there, and when we do, we'll let you know as well. We even do like yeah. a fellowship, yeah. Because yeah, the reason why I brought that up for you and your wife, right? The Lord has put on my heart, man. And I don't know how you're gonna bring it, but He's gonna bring it, man. For me to put on a marriage retreat, mm. you know what I'm saying? For married couples, man, a marriage retreat, bro. Wow. Where we spend the weekend together, man. Have speakers and because, because look at bro. The stronger your marriage is, the stronger your ministry, and that's what the Lord been revealing, man. Too many times, us men. We try to do it separate without our wives, right? We try to go out before our wives or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and it brings contention. But once you do it together as a unit, it's more power. It's one flesh, right? Yeah. So the Lord's told me, man, the churches, they really don't do that marriage retreat retreats no more, man. So the Lord's put on my heart, man, just to, you know, put on a marriage retreat, man, where we get together with our wives and we do, you know what I'm saying? We just do stuff. We have some speakers and just fellowship with other married couples and just, Built that bond, you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, that they definitely. Eat one and come in and intent, and, and when he tried to come in intent, we fight him off with the word. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lord's been putting on heart, man. So that's why that's why I said that for next year, man. So yeah. Praise God, yo. Yeah, we're down. Praise God, man. Praise God. Amen. 
Yes, looking forward to it, man. Definitely. Okay. Um, all right, we got um eight, nine minutes. Anybody else like to share anything? Questions or insight before we close out for tonight? Man, I want to say something too, man. Just as far as just uh y'all marriage, you and Shakisha, man. Yeah, man, I, I, one thing I think you know, both probably, you know, probably, you know, we love seeing y'all, man. We love seeing y'all together, man. Teach, you know, ministry anyway, you know what I'm saying? That's what you Again, you know, home begins at home first. So, and, you see, I know, pray the most high, you know, keep his heavenly host around y'all. Uh, the most high, I know, protect y'all and y'all on the hand and come. You know, I mean, bless y'all and y'all on. I think he got cut off. Look like he'll. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. See if he'll. He's going to come back in. All right, he's coming back in right now. Nelson, you there? Can you hear me now? I'm back now. Yeah, yeah, you breaking up a bit. Yeah, go ahead. You stay, I'm still kind of okay. I would just say, uh, yeah, just, you know, I pray that the most high so y'all be and I you know, God keep doing his marvelous work in your know, heart, mind, and souls. Um, you know, just, I just, uh, just, you know, pray to uh, speak for you all to just keep doing, uh, uh, you know, the Lord's way. And um, we're grateful to have you all, man, for and. Yeah, I think he cut off again. All right. Let's see. Um, he's gonna come back on. All right. Well, um, until he comes back, anybody else wanna say anything, share anything, or any questions before we close out? All right. And um looks like he hasn't come back on. All right, if nobody else has anything they want to share and Nelson has not come back on, then I'm going to close out for tonight then. Once again, you know, I thank everybody for attending tonight's Oh, I thank everybody for attending tonight's teaching. You know, I pray that you are all, you know, fed and blessed by it that we also take heed to the message as well. Let's continue to keep each other in prayer. Um, Continue to, um, you know, encourage each other, build each other up, you know, you know, and reach out to each other as well. You know, have any um, questions, need prayer, or you just want somebody, you know, to talk or whatever, share anything, reach out to myself or my wife. And, um, you know, we're here. You know, I thank you all guys, you know, for supporting this ministry, um, for also keeping us in prayer as well. You know, and as, as I mentioned before, you know, definitely looking forward to eventually as God leads, you know, doing like a, you know, a conference, you know, somewhere as God leads. And we just, you know, we meet up that we see each other in person fellowship. And as the Lord leads, you know, um, do baptisms, you know, whoever wants to be baptized and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to close this out in prayer. I'm just going to say, you know, all wish you all, hope you all have a blessed night, you know, in Jesus name. Heavenly father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God, for another teaching. We thank you, O Lord God, for this time of fellowship, this time of encouragement, O Lord God Almighty. And we ask that you watch over us throughout this night, O God. Continue to just keep us in the way, O Lord God. Continue to strengthen us, O Lord God. Continue to build up our faith, O Lord God, to walk in faith and confidence of you, O Lord God, not fearing anything, 
oh Lord God, but walking in faith and walking in fear of you, oh Lord God Almighty. We thank you, oh Lord God, what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do. Continue to purify us, O oh Lord God. Continue to have our minds renewed daily, O oh Lord God, as we meditate upon your word, as we read your word, as we spend time in prayer and seeking you, O oh Lord God. Knowing that when we seek you in your kingdom, everything else shall be added unto us. We thank you, O oh Lord God. Let your will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.